journey to home birth, my first home birth, and I'm so excited. So uh, I wanted to do a little interview, kind of like um, with Bethany and Becky. Um, she'll be attending, like, is that how I say attending? Mm -hmm. The birth? Yep, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, it's a birth assistant. And so, um, yeah, we're just really excited. So I'll be asking her a few questions and she'll just enlighten us about home birth because this is my first time and this is new to a lot of people. Um, people have asked me lots of questions. So yeah, I want to, um, yeah, let's do this. Why did you become a midwife? Okay, so I started out doing labor support in the hospital as a doula. Okay. So I did that for a couple of years and I just realized it was not, I wasn't really able to provide all the care I wanted to and really give them the experience that they wanted. So I attended my first home birth as a doula and I was just hooked on it that way. So I started oh. midwifery as well shortly after that. Oh, cool. That's very cool. Okay, here it comes. Okay, okay, so William has joined us. Say hi. Oh, good job. <laughs> okay, so um, why did you choose home birth? Oh, the, that was your first experience, kind of like Right, okay. so I, I found I could offer more individualized care mm -hmm. and just let women birth the way they wanted if they did it at home. So without as many um, protocols and procedures, like mm -hmm. from hospitals. Yeah, yeah. So that's really important. Birth is so personal, mm -hmm. you know, and just Having it the way that you want without all the restrictions mm -hmm. is so, so important. Yeah. It means so much, yeah. Absolutely. And when you're just in your own environment, usually it goes smoother and progresses when you're comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Less pressure. You don't have to leave. Yeah, right, right. I remember when I went to the birth center, I would even want to do certain things, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't let, necessarily listen. Yeah. Because it just might have stinks. I wanted to stay on the floor, uh -huh. and I didn't want to get in the bed. It was too soft. Yeah. So it just it just made it worse or something. Yeah. So, but I couldn't speak because it hurt too bad. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, get on the bed. I'm like, no, I don't want to get on the bed. Yeah. But I can't process, you know. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we we adapt to you. Like yeah. Wherever you want to be, whatever position, and we just move our stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. Whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, why can anyone do this? Because it's like a misconception that only the strong can do home birth, you know? So why can't yeah. anyone yeah. do this? Absolutely, well, honestly, as long as you're low risk and don't have any like pre-existing conditions or you're not on any medication, that means you're low risk. And you really can, with a midwife, um, have the birth you want. So we really support you to get ready yeah. for the labor and natural birth so we want you to know what's going on we want you to know comfort techniques and coping techniques how to really get through it and then we're there with you yeah so if you're freaking out yeah in transition which every woman does at yeah. the end of labor we can support you and say it's almost over let's check you see where you're at okay I'll we're almost that. there yep and we support you to do it instead of just saying do you want another girl do you want another girl, you want another girl? like that's not your only option so yeah. we just encourage you yeah, yeah. And I think, um, like, uh, when I've progressed and I'm at the point where I'm like, this is not possible. Just get the baby out of me anyway, you know? <laughs> it's always the time where yeah. the baby's being right to my anyway, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's almost done. Right, right. Okay, so this is one thing my, my mom even said. What was concerned about was that if something was to happen mm -hmm. at home, is it safe mm -hmm. for us to be able to get to the hospital mm -hmm. in time? Yeah, that's a great question. So most common emergencies, we bring the equipment we need to take care of that at home. Mm -hmm. So if you were to bleed too much after the birth, we have the medications we need to take care of that. We carry oxygen with us. Mm -hmm. um, if the baby needs to be resuscitated, we bring all of that with us too. So most things were things that happen like maybe five percent of the time we bring all that stuff with us mm -hmm. and then the less common emergencies we call ahead we can go ahead and ambulance if we need to and get to the other hospital to be yeah the nearest one yeah anything yeah. that anything you want to <laughs> yeah. okay. and then you do have to weigh how common is it for those emergencies to happen and how common is it to have risk from an epidural or a C-section or things like that. So you're weighing yeah. the risk of that hospital birth with the risk of hospital birth, which most people don't think about, but there yeah. are risks once you commit to those procedures. Yeah. And it ends up being really similar. It's actually 
recent studies show that low-risk women have better outcomes when they birth outside the hospital because they're not using those interventions and midwives we help you not tear, we help yeah. you progress because you're moving in all these different positions. Yeah. So you're really, you're more likely to have a spontaneous vaginal birth outside the hospital with midwives yeah. than in the hospital. So we just have to say those things. And that's because midwives are supporting, you know, birth is a normal physiologic process, not a pathological process. Yeah. Where if you go to the hospital when you're sick, the birth is normal and your bodies are made to do it. And so yeah. outside of the hospital, you're really just supporting the woman and doing her own thing and letting her body do what it was made to do. Yeah, and again, have less complications and less mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. really true. You don't have to change that. Yeah. You can do IVs if you need to, but you don't have to have one unless you need one. Yeah. So you're not hooked up to all these things. And we also do the intermittent uh, monitoring of the baby where you can be in any position you want. So you don't have those straps around your belly and you're not stuck in bed. So yeah. it, and water birth is an option. So. Yeah. yeah, and I've done it in the hospital and mm-hmm. outside, so I know that I remember feeling uncomfortable by having those things on me, whereas I was more, you know, calm and more comfortable, I guess, you know, uh-huh. um, when I'm not having something just touching me. Right. Even the something touching me right. heightens the pain. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, definitely true. Right. So, um, yeah, you kind of talked about the benefits. I was going to ask about the benefits, okay. but... Um, I, you know what I want to talk about, and I don't have my list, is the placenta, okay. eating on my placenta. Yeah. I talked about this, I just had my baby shower um, on Saturday, and I told my uh, guests that this time I was going to actually eat it, like freeze it, and then put it okay. in my smoothie. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're an animal! <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, could you explain just the benefits of that? Sure. So. Um, consumption of the placenta is becoming more popular, and it's really common in other cultures, like in traditional Chinese medicine. Oh, we have to, we have a couple more guests that pop in. Oh, but yes, we're just going over. Yes, yeah, say hi. Hi. <laughs> say hi, Lucy. Hi. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so yes, we're going over just like the benefits of eating um, your placenta. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So studies show it's high in iron, lots of vitamins and minerals, and it also still has some hormones in it, like progesterone. So when a mom consumes it after the birth, they tend to be less tired and less hormonal because you're replacing the iron you lost at the birth and you're not, um, the hormones aren't dipping as drastically when you are consuming the placenta. So yeah. women usually have less fatigue, less postpartum um, depression. And yep, I learned that after, it's a, like a high, like you feel like high after you have your baby mm-hmm. and then you just drop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was it like three days or three uh-huh. weeks? Or yes. I don't know. Three, three days. After the birth is when you're kind of at your lowest and your milk's coming in and yeah. it can be really hard. And it can be help with milk supply too, they do stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, because those first days, you don't really have milk. Those first couple of days. Right. right. Yeah, just the mm-hmm. colostrum. Wow. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. it's like every 30 minutes they're drinking. Yep. Yeah. Empty. It's rough. <laughs> so it can help with that too. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I decided to do it this way without the um, getting encapsulated because um, it's more, didn't you get a little more potent? It could uh-huh, be. Uh-huh, because yeah. you're not drying it out. Yeah, you're not drying it out. So, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> well, thank you so much you're for joining me. Um, I'm excited to share this and to just, if you guys have any questions, um, yeah, let me know and I can share them. Um, with Bethany, yeah. and if you're considering home birth and you're in the DSW area, she's your girl. She's the yeah, best. we'd love to meet you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye.